Hey, welcome back. Clay Nelson, Life Balance, are on KZSB AM 1290. And we've been talking about, um, I mean, picture this. It's the day after the, the election, and what are you doing? See, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to go back and be the person you were for the last eight years waiting for somebody to fix your stuff. Or in the last six months, I don't want you to be the person that's pointing fingers and making somebody else wrong. Look, we got the trouble we got into financially and everywhere else because we didn't participate. We didn't hold our elected officials accountable. Got it? We were hoping they would fix it. They would take care of us. They will do what's supposed to be done. And don't worry, I'll get to it. But I don't have time right now, so I just didn't do it. You understand? So think about this. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. You sign up and pay for a cruise to go to Alaska, Mexico, or the Caribbean, something like that. And there are umpteen different activities and things that you can do during the course of the cruise. So rather than planning for what you want to do, right, what you want to get out of your trip, you are just kind of wandering around aimlessly. If you don't plan, if you don't have a say in how your life turns out, guess what? You're not going to get what you want. So you don't communicate what you do or don't want. You simply sit back and wait for someone else to make plans for you. At the end of the trip, you're disappointed because you didn't see or accomplish the things that you really wanted to do, and you blame the cruise director for not taking you to where you want to go and do what you wanted to do. So you get the point? How does a cruise director know what you want if you don't tell them? So none of us can expect to get to where we're going to get or get to where we want to go if we fail to get into action in our own behalf. Think about that, okay? If we fail to tell those who are in our leadership positions what we want, you have to tell them what you want. You have to tell them what you don't want. You have to speak up. You have to dial the phone or be able to send an email or talk to somebody in a cocktail party that knows somebody. Now, I realize that we've talked about this topic fairly recently. In fact, the last three or four shows have been all about responsibility and accountability. But I bear, you know, I really believe that it really bears repeating. I mean, after all, if we choose to give up being a victim of the world around us, what might we be able to achieve? I mean, think about this now. If you want to have money in the bank, got to have a plan for it. If you want to have money, if you got money in the bank, you want to keep it, you got to have a plan for that too. So you got that? So, you know, give up being a victim. You know, if we're all citizens and all of us, you know, we're more than active in holding our leaders accountable for the promise they make us, how more, more effective would our leaders be? Now, I just downloaded a note on the net where the uh, American Coalition of Clean Coal Electricity uh, sent Mr. Obama, President-elect Obama, a note that says, hey, you know, over the last three or four months, you said you were going to back clean coal processes. So we want you to know that we're going to hold you accountable for doing that. And this is the Clean Coal Coalition. So if the Clean Coal Coalition can do this, why can't we? You got it? I mean, they're saying now that, you know, to be really efficient and not burn up all the fossil fuel on the planet, it's going to take 20 years to change the thinking and change the processes of how we burn and get our energy, okay? And that uh, we're going to get some from atomic power. We're going to get some from alternative fuels. We're going to get some from wind generation. We're going to get some from a lot of places I can't remember right now. But it's going to take two decades to get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need to take two decades. We need to be more careful in what we're burning now. We need to conserve. We need to be smart. I mean, I think one of the worst things that can happen to us now, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. So y'all get ready. Get ready to stick pins in the clay doll. Okay? It's what you've got to understand is if, if the price of gasoline goes down below two bucks, we're in trouble because people are going to go right back to wasting it like they used to. I want it to stay up there around three bucks. Okay, or in that range. So you have to think about when you're filling up your gas tank. You have to think about where you're going. You have to be present to what you're burning. You have to be understand that your you know, uh, footprint on the earth really means something. You understand? You have to really start getting smart about this and don't go back to the old ways of thinking. So it's also the old ways of thinking and holding people accountable. Now we have a whole new group of people coming in. Mr. Obama has already got his chief of staff chosen, all right? And, uh, in fact, he chose his chief of staff last night, so he's rolling. Now, what do you think it would be like to be Mr. Obama and uh, to have the world's problems on your shoulders? You win the election, and all of a sudden, 
You've got all these problems on your shoulders. I mean, I just hope that he doesn't shrink. I hope that he stays powerful. I mean, he's almost iconic. He's almost, he's almost an icon for the change that's about to come or for the change that people want. And that's a lot of pressure to carry. I hope that old boy is really tough. All right? And I'm going to support him in being that. I'm also going to support him when he's not. I'm going to say, hey, hello. Get back in there, dude. So we got a caller? Clay, we have Ian on the line. Yeah, hi, Ian. Hello, hello. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ian. I watched the process yesterday. yesterday Did you call last week, Ian? I'm, are you the Irishman? I, I am, yes. You are, huh? Yes. Yes. I, Welcome back. Fascinating, fascinating process yesterday. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Uh, but I, 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 I'm perplexed by the, the comments made during the election and then the comments made at the end of the election. Everybody's chummy, <laughs> chummy at the end, and yet they're fighting <laughs> hammer and tong at the beginning, in the middle there. Yeah. What's well, up? It's called creative alignment, my friend. All right. It, I mean, y- you can stick pins in the opposing person and do all the things you're going to do, but after the the election has you know taken place and somebody has won, you want to get the family or the team together and creatively align in a direction that's best for all, and that's really what happened last night. I mean, uh, Mr. McCain was absolutely a gracious loser, okay? He did his job as he has all his life, and he's going to go back and continue the job he had before he decided to run for the president of the United States, the highest office in in the United States. And both he and Mr. Obama graciously, you know, he, he, McCain actually said, boy, you know, you've done a great job. I want to play. I'm not going anywhere. I'm on your team. And, Mc, Mc, and uh, Obama said the same thing and thanked him for it. So can you imagine, though, if, if on that level people didn't forgive and just stayed in the speaking that took them to a place where they were showing the differences between the two idealistic ways of thinking, and if they just kept it that way? I mean, the United States wouldn't go anywhere. You just sit around and watch your buddy argue. Sure. So that's what last night was all about. It's called burying the hatchet. Well, but why say the words in the first place? Then you don't have to bury the hatchet and forgive. Well, it makes no sense. Well, okay, but it's also very human. It's also the way elections are won. It's forming the opinions of the electric, the electric, right? The the voting public. So it's all about getting people to align with your thinking. So you got to do whatever you got to do to get people to go in the voting booth and and color in the little dot next to your name. Well, I, 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 I still have problem with that because it sounds like the ends justify the means no matter what. Well, I think it could sound that way. I think it could be that way in some instances, but I don't think that's the way that Mr. McCain or Mr. Obama wants it to end up. I mean, I often listen to the, the, the British Parliament, and they just go out at hammer and tong there. And okay, now we're talking. Now, the British Parliament, I mean, I, I listen to that every once in a while, too, and i yeah. got to tell you, they really go at it, don't they? They do. Yeah, but then they go out and have a cup of tea together afterwards. Well, you know, life is a game, and you all die at the end of it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you get it? Hi. Hi. Right, thank you. All right, God bless. Okay, now, so, wow, what a great caller. So, um, he, he called in probably two weeks ago, I think, or something. Uh, Ian, I, Ian's called in a couple of times. Yeah, I love his accent. And, you know, he's a very calm, slow thinker, and uh, uh, he's a good listener, too. It's really cool. Okay, now, um, so I was talking about, you know, if you sign up for a cruise ship, and you sign up to go on a cruise, and you don't tell the cruise people what you want to do. I mean, who's at fault there? All right. So that's really a conversation that I really want you to take a look at. And it's really what you have to, to think about. Do I know what I want? If I do, speak it. If I don't, ask for help to get it. Think about that. OK, so I'm going to go on another break now. God, t- today's show is just whizzing by. Uh, so you listen to Clay Nelson, Clay Nelson Life Bounce Hour on KZSB AM 1290. You're, we're talking about participating in your future, and it's really who you have to be to participate in this great future of ours. So get on back here. i got a lot of good stuff for you.